We got it, baby. We got it. Happy Sunday, you little mooks, huh? You fucking little beautiful muppets, huh? You brush your teeth today, huh? Ah! Oh, you didn't think I was in an elevator, dude? You're wrong, bruh! You're wrong! What up, baby? Real baby boy. Female baby. Bud smokers only, bud smokers only, only, bud smokers only, bud smokers only, only. All right, what's up there, you little gun hustling syrup sippers? Huh? You ever take a sip of syrup right out of the bottle? Who are you? You ever done that, dude? You ever just taken a hit right off that freaking jug of diabetes? Sipping that syrup? You out there, you've been digging in your snout, huh? You've been picking your nose and eating your own snout nachos, boo-boo? That's it, guys. That's a little panda. That is panda there. That is a song by Designer. Uh, Designer. Panda. That little probably a... I don't know if he's an African-American animal rights activist. I don't know if you guys are familiar or not. Uh, talented rap artist. What's up? What's up, guys? You little, you little asymmetrical, just migrant workers. How are you, huh? How you feeling? How are you feeling, you asymmetrical little frickin'... Mm, you little gunt warlords, huh? How's your gunt, bruh? Is your gunt shining? You gotta shine up your gunt, man. If you're not familiar with your gunt, that's the area kind of between your gut and your and your coont. And that's that area right in there, man. And I like to put a little bit of uh, lotion on mine. You know, just because in case something happened to me, I don't want to show up in heaven with a ashy gunt, if you feel me. How you doing, guys? You feeling asymmetrical? I am, man. I, I was looking at the Oscars. The Oscars, um... You know, where the highfalutin get together to, you know, look at each other. And um, and those people are, are symmetrical. If you, if you uh, bisect their face from top to bottom, everything on them matches the other side. I mean, you know that half their face knows the other half their face very well. Um... I'm not a, I'm not symmetrical, man. I'm looking I'm looking at myself right now, doing making the because we got this on YouTube's as well. And if you could, one of my nostrils a little bigger than the other one, so I'm coming in a little bit, you know, I'm pulling a little little bit more air on the right side. You know, that might be I might have a little bit of Cherokee in me on that part. And uh, one of my eyes looks like it kind of doesn't really want to be with me all that much, you know, like it had other plans that maybe didn't work out, you know, like maybe my eyes, like one of my eyes was, uh, you know, it had planned to be maybe with a different person and then it just came along with me at the last minute. Um, so that's really where I'm at symmetry wise. My eyebrows, praise God, I don't think they could not know each other more. I mean, they are just, it's almost like they wanted to be mustaches on two different people. So that is where I am coming in, rather non-symmetrical. How are you guys, huh? Are you symmetrical? Well, if you are, you're, uh, maybe you could win you an Oscar. Maybe you could win you an Oscar. It's uh, Mondays, February 27th, and it is 19, nope, 2017. We have advanced. 
Uh, I'm coming to you from Denver. So if I'm sounding a little, um, if I'm sounding a little overtaken or uh, coming in light, it's because I've I've been up here in the hills, man. You know, you're a mile high. They say right when you get into town, you show up at a mile high. Then I get to the hotel over here. They put me on the fourth floor. I'm like, I can't. I, I just, I'm a, I'm a mile up, lady. You know, you sending me in f another 40 feet up, another 60 feet up in the air. I can't live like this. So I woke up. I'm waking up ashy skin and just, um, just my whole head is dehydrated. You gotta, you, you, I feel like a plant up here because you gotta drink water. You gotta drink water constantly. You know, I saw some lady watering a plant yesterday morning. Jealousy. Only time I ever felt jealousy uh, seeing a plant get watered. Did I tell you this? This uh, they had a Latino gentleman that used to they used to water plants by this apartment complex that I was living in off of Barrington Avenue in Los Angeles when I first moved there. I was uh, actually sleeping under a, my buddy's bed, off to the side of his bed actually, on a one of those pool toys. One of the big ones, you know, the nice, uh, the nicer ones, the flat ones, not like a one of those big doves or whatever that people are, you know, all the pit, pretty ladies are taking pictures with on Instagrams now. But I, um, I, what was I doing? Oh, I was over there, and they had a gardener that worked there. This Latino gentleman was a gardener. He was a um, adult gardener, and uh, and one time he's watering the flowers, and. Um, and he goes, guess what? Because he spoke a different language than me a little bit. And he was trying with English and doing well. And he goes, oh, make it rain, I make it rain, I make it rain with this hose. And I thought that was kind of cute. Uh, so if you see a gardener, you can tell him that one. Um, tell him you heard it from another, another gardener, an affiliate, I guess you could call him. Uh, good to be here, man. Happy leap year. If it is leap year, not sure. Uh, they don't tell us when it is or when it isn't. Uh, happy Black History Month. That's wrapping up. So if you have a black friend or a couple of black friends or family members, uh, check in with them. You know, see see how that's feeling, what's going on, um, and, and maybe get a, you know, do something special uh, for the end of Black History Month. And happy Mardi Gras down uh, to my friends and family down there in Louisiana. I, uh, I was so jealous. One of my friends... Um, two of my friends actually are on a float. They got to ride on a float. One of them got to be the DJ, the musical uh, disc jockey on top of the float and play all the music going down the street. And I saw a video of his on Facebook and it looked really absolutely amazing. Um, they also had somebody down at Mardi Gras. We'll get right into the news here. Drove into the crowd. Hit 27 people, man. This fell in his 20s. He was intoxicated. He was five times, they said, the legal limit. Now, I don't know if you, I mean, how can, if you can get five times the legal limit, dude, you're, first of all, you're a champion, bro. I mean, but it is, uh, it's amazing that you can then get into your car, take those chances, man. Um, he hit a bunch of people, some children, officers. Uh, apparently, everybody's going to be okay from what I hear. I mean, the whole idea, really, of the Mardi Gras parades is kind of dangerous because they send floats, you know, motor-powered floats pulled by trucks and and truckers who are driving the trucks. I mean, you have to, you think you, these are truckers who are driving these things, pulling them through crowds of people. So, who have, who are, who've been drinking all day. So, just the theory of that, if I pitched you that idea, you would say, nah, we're not doing that. That's not safe. But down there in Louisiana, man, it is a hell of a good time. Um, I'm up here in Denver. I'm actually in a closet. I'm in the closet uh, right now. It's 3.58 a.m. Um, I can barely keep my eyes open, but my eyes don't open very far anyway. Um, one thing I've realized over my years, I wish I had, when I see people whose eyes really do open up, I get envious, you know? I got eyes more like a frog or more like a... Mm, Maybe like the Dutch. A lot of the Dutch have are kind of narrow-eyed. Um, the Oscars were on. We'll move Cruz into the news. But I'm taping here and I'm, I'm in a closet in this uh, comedy condominium here in Denver, Colorado. 
So if I sound a little weathered, it's because I'm coming from higher heights tonight. I want to thank everybody that came out to my shows in Denver. Um, man, I had a good time. I mean, I was at this new club called Comedy Works South out here in Greenwood Village. Sounds kind of fancy, but it's just kind of a little bit suburban. But, but you can see the mountains, and there was snow outside, and they had a hot tub. And I got in there and watched my skin turn red and, and, and got very dehydrated. Um, but it was kind of fun. So that was good. Uh, I was watching the Oscars a little bit of it. The man gave the wrong, he, he chose the wrong winner at the end, Warren Beatty who was Dick Tracy. I don't know if uh, some of you younger people even remember Dick Tracy, but he was, I mean, Dick Tracy was everything. You know, he was, I mean, he was an early um, gun activist, uh, you know, selling illegal liquor and uh, hunting bad guys there. And, um, and he was really something else. Dick Tracy, you can look him up. He was a private investigator. He was like Magnum P.I., but before that, and then a modern day, Mm, I don't even know if you have anybody now. Maybe NCIS, but it takes four of them to do it. Dick Tracy did it all. So you can go back and check that man out. But the senior citizen guy, Warren Beatty, is getting into his senior years. He announced the wrong, the wrong winner. It made me think, actually, you know, my father was old when I was growing up, and I tap into this from time to time. Um... My father was, you know, he would let me drive. When I was tall enough to drive, my father would let me drive. So I remember I was 12 years old, and uh, and I'd hit a little growth spurt. You know, I'd caught a little, you know, i just, my my, uh, my genetics were just spraying out into my, into my bloodstream and really making me prosper, you know, prosper in my body and prosper in my, in my, not my, not my brain really much, but just hitting new heights. So I was coming in at 5 feet uh, 10 inches, I think. I don't know. I could be wrong. 5'10". Like, I don't know what I was, man. So And I'd hit me a little growth spurt. My legs were long enough to drive, so my father let me drive. He was 82 years old, and I was 12. And he would let me drive. And my, my dad used to be a... He was a many things, but he also was one of those men at the college campuses that would yell at you to come over and sign up for credit card scams, you know. And it wasn't really a scam; it was a good credit card if you needed one, and you were in college. I mean, you you didn't need you didn't deserve one, but this is America, so if you don't need it, we'll find a way to give it to you. Um, and 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 we would go sign people up, you know. And I was the little fellow on the table barking getting people over, you know, to get their credit card applications in. And, uh, and my father would let, him, let me drive him there. And it was about 60 miles. Um, one time we picked up my friend. So my best friend is in the car with us. My dad didn't know he'd fallen asleep in the passenger seat. We picked up my friend Scott, and we all drove uh, over to Hammond, Louisiana. And uh, my dad did the credit card barking. And me and Scott would walk around and eat uh, hot chips. They had these hot fries, I think they were called. It was just a bag of just hot chips. and But they called them fries, but they were really chips. So we would eat those and walk around the college campus. But I remember that, and I remember the seniors. You know, just seniors can make poor choices. That's really what I'm going with. Um, you know, it was a poor choice to let children drive a car at high speeds, man, top speeds. I remember another time the, the tire blew out. Driving my father, uh, I was doing about 75, we're on the interstate, and the tire blew out, and he had been asleep, because my, my dad liked to rest and get his rest in, you know, when he felt it was appropriate, which was very often, very, very often, my dad liked to pick his feet, and uh, he liked to dig in his ear with a car key, and he liked to hug me, he was a loving man, but he, uh, he liked to, he liked to fall asleep and rest, you know, because he'd been alive for 82 years, 83 years at that point. You got to get your rest in. Rest is mostly what you're doing. I mean, because eventually you're going to rest eternally. So it makes sense that you are practicing heavily. So he would rest a lot. And that tire blew out, dude. And I never seen a man wake up like that, man. He woke up fast, bro. Hurt his neck. He hurt his neck. And I remember a nice black gentleman stopped and helped us out because that tire had blown out. Um, 
So happy Black History Month to that guy, wherever he is these days. I don't even remember his name. But, uh, but anyhow, moving onward. Another story I'll tell you about, just about seniors, because I know, you know uh, I'm, I'm referencing this Warren Beatty. He got the, allegedly it's his fault. This is the last I heard. I mean, it's 4 a.m. and I only looked two times because I don't seriously give a fuck. Um, you know, I could care less. I mean, I'm excited about the arts and I'm an artist myself. But some of this, I don't even know what award show we're on. I feel like it's pandering sometimes. Um, I feel like we could give awards out for for other stuff if we could just find a way to make it uh, that people wanted to watch those things more, you know. Maybe give an award out for who give the best pat on the back. You ever gotten a pat on the back? When was the last time somebody patted you on the back? And originally, I guess it had to be a man named Pat, maybe. You know, like, oh, there comes Pat. With his crazy hands, you know? But that's a, that's a lost art, patting somebody on the back. Because you can't be a creep about it. You can't be a, you know, you can't do it too hard. So I got a buddy who pats too hard. He patted me too hard the other day. And you know what, dude? I approached him. And his wife was right there. And I approached him. And I said, man, you know, you patted me on the back too hard, dude. It's not... At that point, it's not for me because that a pat on the back is supposed to be, it's like a, almost like a round of applause between your hand and someone else's back, um, and someone's spine or back area, solar plexus, and for you to just wham somebody. I got another little fella I know. He lives down in uh, uh, Texas, and he used to live up in Canada, so he came back to America, and he pats people on the back extremely hard. So that shit pisses me off, dude. If you're going to pat somebody on the back, make it about them, dude. Make it soft. Make it comfortable. Fucking trying to hurt people because you are you can't control your arms or your feelings? Pisses me off, man. But anyway, what were we talking about, dude? Sorry. So seniors, my dad, I remember another story about my dad. Sorry about getting into these dad stories. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, my dad was an older man. He was born in 1910. Um, I got three siblings, three, three beautiful siblings, uh, and not to mention step families. I lived with a couple different families uh, growing up. Um, I got emancipated when I was uh, 14 and went on about my own business, really. But I was blessed to have some people help me out. Um, so I got a great deal of side family as well, you know. But I remember as a child at Halloween one time, my mother would take us trick-or-treating, you know, and... Um, we went trick-or-treating one time, and we came back to the house, and my dad was out there. He was giving out the candy. He was inside, but he was giving out the candy. And I remember knocking on the door, and we had our faces painted and stuff, you know? And, and he opened the door. We'd come back from trick-or-treating. We were done trick-or-treating. We'd finished. We'd tricked and treated, and my little sister was just crying in the stroller, and my mom was pissed and trying to beat us, but we were you know, geeked up on Milky Ways and nasty, probably pieces of candy that had fallen in the street and had a little bit of dirt on them and butter scotches. And we was all just mouth full of Tootsie Rolls, man. I remember my brother choked so hard on a Tootsie Roll, I had to hit him with a small log that was by the ditch one time to get it out of his, out of his throat. So that's actually kind of a pat on the back that's necessary. Now, that's an okay time to pat somebody on the back hard if they're fighting through a Tootsie Roll. You know, or a couple Tootsie Rolls. I swear my brother put two in his mouth at the same time. And, and he probably still denies that. But he also can live in denial sometimes. We all can. Anyhow, we get back home. My dad opens the door. He's standing there. And he didn't know that it was his own children. He just reached in the candy bowl that he had. He gave us some candy and he closed the door on us. And that was one time that I remember first realizing, like what it, like as a senior that you just, you get older, you know, and you don't have the jurisdiction over your own vision maybe as much as you did when you were younger. Um, and that was a weird time. It was just a weird moment. Not trying to get dour, but that was just a weird moment that here we were all excited to see my dad and he didn't, he didn't recognize us. And I don't think we were super well clad in our little outfits. Um, I just think he was just getting older. And that's one of the first moments I realized that he was getting older and that senior citizens will really start to stray their course. 
And we're all headed there, man. We are all headed there. You know, say, I heard a rumor this weekend, the number one place for STDs is a place down in Florida called The Village, or The Villager, and it's a lot of senior citizens out there touching each, each other's junk as they get older. And um, that kind of scares me a little bit. You know, I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like I don't know if I want to have sex when I get that old. You know, it's already can be nerve wracking enough, middle aged man. So anyhow, what else, man? Let's keep it moving here. Um, yeah, I had a nice time in Denver, man. I was pretty, uh, I saw some friends of mine um, that came from school, friends from home that live here now. I could live here, man. If you haven't been to Denver, I mean, it's really, it's kind of like a little bit of white people hiding in the hills. Um, but it's it's peaceful, man. It's nice. It's, um, I couldn't really figure out the downfalls of it. You know, I could see, I guess it's, the traffic gets bad. It was snowing, so the weather was weird. Your brakes make that crunchy sound when it, they got snow in them. Things like that. But outside of that, it seemed pretty joyous. Spent some time with a friend of mine. He has a one-year-old child, a baby, um, a female baby, and uh, and it was pretty cool, man. It's interesting to see, because my friend, I first met him when he was maybe 12 years old, and I played in the uh, Covington All-Star Basketball Team, and he played on the Mandeville All-Star Basketball Team, and he uh, Mandeville was fancy, you know? And and I remember seeing this boy, and I was like, damn, he had the hairiest legs I'd ever seen for a young man. I mean, he looked like he had the legs of a 30-year-old or 35-year-old. And I remember thinking he that this boy is, you, he's cheating. This man is using his father or his uncle's legs to compete against us. And that's unfair, dude. And I told the referee that, and the referee looked at me like I was just dumb, just pretty much dumb as fuck, dude. So... And in hindsight, that referee probably was on to something. You know, he probably had an inkling, a correct inkling, that I didn't know what was going on. But we hung out with a baby, man. A baby's wild, bro. I don't know if you've been around a baby recently, but they, man, they, they're just funny. They're just, they're whimsical. You don't know where their thoughts are coming from, and they just moving and gyrating. You know, they can crap if they want, or be smiling, or you know, dance or throw something in a restaurant, dude. I mean, they're amazing. They're almost like spending time with somebody that's really on a lot of cocaine, you know? Because uh, cocaine is a diuretic. It'll make you spray out your bottom if it, you know, if you're on some heavy stuff. Uh, but anyway, my, my, my buddy had a beautiful little girl and we went and did that and hung out with him and his wife. Went to breakfast and that was nice, man. Um, yeah, children, you just got to take care of them. I mean, they, you know, we get back to his house, this child doesn't know what to do. Just standing around. Doesn't have a big plan, you know. Um, so you really have to tend to him and have a good plan for him. And, you know, it made me think a little bit more that I wouldn't mind having a child one day, meet a good woman, maybe somebody that's a nurse or a, you know, she could be like a businesswoman as well, but she's going to have to be probably at least a hard worker because... Because I like to work hard and sometimes I like to rest a little. So sometimes I need a woman that also likes to rest. Growing the hair out, it's getting hella seedy, dude. People call me a lesbian or adult lesbian. Um, you know, somebody called me Eileen Warnos the other day, the serial killing woman. Definitely you can see a lot more animals when I'm walking by. will kind of look in my direction. You know, I have that a little bit of like a uh, cockatiel, which is a beautiful bird. From somewhere else. Anyhow, what else, man? I am tired, dude. I will say that, man. I'm tired. I'm asymmetrical. Uh, but I am happy to be here on this past weekend. Let me drop you guys some dates real quick. Um, April 21 through 23, I'll be in Sacramento at the Punchline. That's April 21st through 23rd. Um, April 25th, I'll be in Millersville, Pennsylvania at the Millersville University. And that's Amish country. So I'm probably going to come a day early and maybe um, get me a little bit of honey, some local honey, or maybe visit some local, some honey hives or the Amish. Uh, reminds me of this episode of Breaking Amish. They had a show called Breaking Amish where it was about Amish people. And this one dude, 
they're interviewing him. You know how they always have the little interviews. And he's like, he's having to cut the grass with that old timey grass cutter. It just like, you know, it goes into like a little bitty circle and he's pushing it around as blades on it. And he's like, man, I don't even know, man. He's like, I was adopted, so I'm not even really Amish. And I thought that was just baffling, dude. Like, imagine being adopted. You realize you, you grow up and you're like, holy shit, I'm Amish. Like, what a blessing to be adopted. But damn, dog. You know, throw me back, you know, if, you know, if you catch me and you're Amish, dude, maybe throw me back. Even though I could use a little peace of mind, I bet they got a lot of peace of mind out there. So Millersville, Pennsylvania, Millersville University, April 25th. I'll be in Tampa May 25th through May 28th, and then I'll be in Pittsburgh June 1st through June 4th. Uh, I caught Pink Eye there in Pittsburgh one time. Very strong strain. Uh, tried to get over my eye into the other side. I tried to get over my nose into the other side. Uh, it wasn't able to breach that divide, you know, to get across that that hill. You know, so it was kind of like my Gettysburg right there in between my eyes, because um, I could have gone blind, maybe, you know, like the girl did in uh, in Little House on the Prairie. Anyhow, um, those are the dates. Those are the dates. Oh, also this week we got the new album coming out March third. Uh, 30 pound bag of hamster bones so you should go out and grab that um, it is a good album it's a prequel to uh, a larger album that will be out later this year um, talking a lot of stories from growing up in life but if you want to invest in that I recommend it uh, and if you don't want to that's totally fine as well but it's called 30 pound bag of hamster bones uh, talking about the time that I'm um, that they busted a man in my hometown with a 30 pound bag of you guessed it, HB's on him, baby boy. And I used to work for that outfit. I used to sell hamsters uh, when I was young. Um, and now a lot of that market's gone to rush, and I've talked about that before. But uh, but you know what still is beautiful? I was thinking about this on stage this weekend. Guinea pigs, man. I mean, just really still the... I mean, they are the... They are... Guinea pigs are really just the... They're the peacocks of ground game, if you will. They are a beautiful, beautiful animal. If their hair is taken care of and their owners are taking care of them, conditioning them sometimes, not a lot, but, you know, annually at least, you know, and I would go seasonally. Uh, beautiful coats, beautiful coats on some guinea pigs and very friendly animals. And, you know, if you haven't visited them in a while, stop into a pet store. You know, get in there and feel some love, dude. They got parrots in a lot of these places, and they'll let you pet them, too. And parrots are... I made love to a girl, actually, in Colorado. And this girl had a little gray parrot, this little... It was some kind of a little gray parrot, and it would rest rest on my shoulder while she and I were making love. Um, I don't know what ever happened to that girl. She never kept in touch with me, but that's her choice. I can't feel bad about that. What else, man? I'll give you a quick sensual report, uh, and then we're going to get into some suggestions, some uh, basic life suggestions. Uh, some callers have called in, um, and I'm sorry I'm so tired, man. I am just exhausted. This altitude is beating me down. If I, I mean, I swear to God, if I go up two more flights of stairs, if I went up to the sixth floor of this hotel, dude, you might never hear or see from me again. My whole inside's dried out. I'm urinating, but it's just my penis is just making sounds and not even uh, throwing any urine out. So you know, my brain is coming in light, but I appreciate your patience. Um, hell, I don't even know what I was going to tell you. I got in the wishing well business, though. I remember that after after the guinea pig business, uh, after I got out of that because they had some racial issues and this Asian guy uh, got electrocuted. But um, but I got in a, into the wishing well business with a couple of guys north of town that were, you know, building and running a couple of wells. And, and I don't know if you've been in that game. It's a tough, that's a wild industry because you're dealing with people's hopes and dreams, you know, and they're putting their hopes and dreams on these monies and they are, you know, and you want to try and facilitate some of these, uh, some of their feelings and, you know, give some validity to some of this. Uh, but it's just, it's a dark, it can be a pretty dark business. You know, a lot of the people who make them and put them out are just trying to make a buck. Um and I got caught up, and they would send me down in there to get the, basically just to 
you know, scourge them, you know, just scourge them out, just empty them out. And a lot of people, you know, especially in seedy areas, they throw recyclables in there, um, guns, swords, a couple murder weapons even. Uh, I mean, potentially, I guess. I mean, why the hell would you just throw a gun or sword down a wishing well for no reason? Uh, recyclables, a lot of trash, empty milk cartons. So you're just picking through all this bullshit just to come up with, you know, seven, eight dollars. And you're so furious by the time you get the money that you don't care that it's other people's dreams and ambitions or whatever. Um, and that's where it really becomes a crossroads mentally, I feel like. It did for me anyway, of deciding, well, fuck, am I just going to take this fucking money or am I going to turn it in, you know, all of it into um, the guys I'm working for? Like, what am I going to do here? Uh so anyway, I got caught up with that. I'll tell you about that in a future time, man, because I am tired. All right, guys, I want to thank some. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's called in for, you know, guidance and suggestions. Um, if you're going through something, man, we all are, you know, and you just need some, uh, you know, some brotherly advice from someone who's not really your brother, because a lot of times your brother can give you some pretty shit, shit guidance. Um, I'll try to be that, you know, and you can be a woman as well. You can be a man or woman and call him for thoughts or guidance or questions or anything, you know. Um, so we're going to crack into a couple of these right now. Theo, I had uh, something that happened to me when I was like 13 years old. And I just, it's been a mystery to me, so I just wanted to see what you thought about it. Uh, so when I was like 13, my dick and balls, like the skin on my dick and balls got really hard for like two days. Uh, and then, like, two days later, the skin just kind of fell off, like, all in one piece. So I pretty much molted like a damn, like a snake or a lizard does. So, yeah, my dick and my balls uh, molted at the time. You know, I'm 13. I just thought that maybe I was growing, like, my dick and my balls. It was time for them to grow, but uh, they never grew, so... It's a mystery, man. You tell me what you think. I, I still to this day don't know what the hell happened. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for the call in there, bud. Um, wow, that's interesting. I did have some experience where my nipples would get very hard um, when I was going through puberty, and my neck, my neck got very. There was a time where I couldn't turn my neck or move my neck, and a lot of that was uh, due to, you know, puberty and sexual advances and stuff like that. Uh, but I've never, I've never heard of somebody, you know, their nuts getting hard and basically just shedding their, shedding their skin like a snake. Wow. It's interesting, dude. I mean, it seemed like you could be on an episode of X-Files, you know, or maybe uh, be a, in a professional wrestling, you know, outfit. And maybe you could, your finishing move could be to just shed your nuts right into somebody's mouth, you know. I mean, talk about teabagging, dude. You... I mean, you could be the master teabagger. People would be getting lined up, dude. It's the only time that people get teabagged and basically left with a memento. I mean, if you can shed your own nuts and autograph that for people, you could have made you could have made tens of thousands of dollars, dude, in the 1980s at different small town fairs. So, um you know, I guess just be glad that that happened in the past. I mean, maybe you're kind of an anomaly. You know, there's different types of people out there that have different things that happen. I got a couple family members um, that have extra knuckle on one of their fingers. Um, my grandfather grew two inches in his 50s, in his late 50s. Um, and, then, and then, honestly, he didn't like my grandmother anymore, which is crazy. They've been in love two inches higher. He was out, bro. He was out. You know, um, maybe you could see more options at that height. I don't know, but he left and that was them and that was that. Uh, yeah, it sounded like you got a lot going on though, man. Your nuts are shedding. I would just, fuck, I, I, I just hope you put it in a scrapbook, you know, not trying to get all Michael's crafts on you, but I hope you put that little sweet, you know, little, uh, coin purse, that little, you know, damn, you should make a yarmulke out of that and sell it to one of your uh, Hebrew buddies, man. That is a, I mean, that's a ball skin yarmulke. Beautiful. But good luck with that, man. I don't really have much guidance here because I don't know. It hasn't happened to me. 
Nothing like that happened to me. But thank you for sharing, man. Let's let's pop into one more uh, here. Hey, bro, I was just wondering, like, what's up, Steel? First of all, let me tell you, I like this show, man. It's great, great. Good stuff, man. Good. Thank Look, you. I was wondering, I want to know what your go-to breakfast item is, dog. Like, what you mess with, man? What you do, like, scrambled eggs? What you do, what you, like, omelets? What about, like, donuts? Do you only mess with donut holes? Do you do cold cereal and milk? Do you sleep through breakfast and just eat a ham sandwich? I mean, waffles? What's up? Like, if, you know, continental breakfast style, do you just want a bowl of fruit? You know, what you do, bro? Like biscuit with honey? If you, if you had a breakfast buffet and they got all kinds of stuff everywhere, what you, what you going straight to? You know, hot ham? Tell me about it. All right. Uh, that guy is probably the most thuggish uh, breakfast inquirer I've ever met. You know, like, yo, dog, what the fuck, Zane? What you got on that? I'm a lit. I'm a lit. I'm a lit. These hoes. I'm a lit. Turkey sausage. Turkey sausage. Turkey sausage. I got turkey sausage. I mean, that guy was straight thugging about his breakfast, huh? Um, thank you for calling, man. I appreciate your energy and enthusiasm about the earliest meal of the day. To most, anyway. Unless people are waking up, you know, after midnight to get a snack. I don't do that. But uh, I like a cold cereal, man. That's the first thing I get. Um, I like a bit of pineapple these days. I'll get a pineapple just to, you know, because especially if it's springtime and you want to get your... You know, I'm, I kind of believe some of those old wives' tales that your seed can really sugar up if you have pineapple, you know, and the ladies kind of enjoy that, you know, a little bit more sweetener in your, in your sweetener. So I'll do that. I'll do a little bit of pineapple or some little cuts of watermelon in a dish or some fruits. What else, man? And, and now if I'm feeling breakfast time, I'll eat breakfast anytime, dude. My funeral, bro, bury me, bury me inside a, just a big, huge thing of chilequiles, bro. You feel me? Some Latino breakfast, dude. I'm bilingual at the table, dog. You know what I'm saying? Huevos, salchicha de pavo. Okay, that's turkey sausage. I got turkey sausage. So I love breakfast, man, but that's what I do. Um, one of my life goals actually has been to meet a woman at a continental breakfast and end up making love after that. You know, after we each make a waffle. Uh, with that crazy waffle maker, dog, that thing is crazy, right? I mean, it seemed like an early curling iron, dude. Remember those early curling irons, dude? Very similar to those uh, Continental Breakfast waffle makers. And then some little fucking mup, it always leaves it going and it starts beeping. And then you just get furious. So, but yeah, I guess those are my things. I mean, I'll get a little cold cereal, you know. I'll get some uh, hot ham. I love that choice. I love the choice you threw out there of hot ham. Um... And I appreciate the call-ins, man. Guys, I just hate to say it, man. I am so tired right now, dude. It's literally 4.34 uh, Mountain Standard Time. I just can't keep my eyes open. I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate everybody that came out in Denver and had a good time. I promise that I'll give you guys a better podcast next week uh, when I can get my brain just warmer, man. I don't know why my brain is just not even showing out very strong at this moment. Oh, God. I just, I don't know. But I had a great weekend, man. I'm feeling a little bit better. I appreciate some people reached out about some concerns. Um, you know, after last episode, just sharing some feelings. There was a couple other questions I wanted to get to. Uh, a couple ladies called in, and I'll get to that next week. Um, essential report. I'll get to that next week as well, man. I'm, to be honest with you, I've fallen back into the woes of, uh, of viewing pornography on the internet. and um, And that's been... That's been a bummer, to be honest with you, dude. I gotten caught up. So I was two months clean, and I got caught up on that pornography. Uh, but everything else is still going okay, man. Living life on life's terms. And uh, God bless you guys, man. I'm going to take us out of here tonight. If you never heard of him, Joe Firstman. One of the best I'd ever heard. And this is Saving All the Love. I'm going to take us out here.
Stay as long as you let me, boo. People in love, man. You've been in love, dude. If you've been in love, man. Or if you are in love, just stay there. Stay there. Sometimes you get in love and you... You gotta find a way to fuck it up. Don't do that. Just stay there. There's nothing else outside of that, man. If you're in love... There ain't no, there's no higher achievement, really. You know? If you're not in love with somebody, well, you know, my buddy told me this week, man. He said, somebody will come along. This is just a patch you're going through. And somebody will come along. And in hearing that, it made me quit thinking about not having somebody special. It made me kind of think that, yeah, somebody else is, somebody's going to come along one day. And it turned kind of like my, my uncertainty and, you know, my thinking I'm undeserving or I don't deserve somebody to love me it made me think more about you know my higher power or the fates or whatever you think are just kind of ironing out the walkway so that the bridge will connect you know and I will find somebody but in the meantime I've found more peace you know for now for this week I found a little more peace a little more patience. And I'm okay with myself a little more. So that's that's a good place to be, you know? Fuck, I don't even know what I'm talking about, dude. I'm fading, bro. My eyes are getting all squirrely. You ever seen, like, somebody's eyes who's been, like, a baby who's been awake too long, dude? And their eyes start fucking <laughs> trying to fight each other, but they can't get out of their sockets? That's what my eyes are doing, dude. I'm going to shut it down, man. I'll make more sense next week, I promise. Thank you guys for the love and support, man. Be good to yourself, huh? When you do that today, just be good to yourself today. Don't let your problems... Don't let your problems start you out on Monday, man. You let, you tell your problems they fucking show up tomorrow, bro. Today you got this. Have a good day, man. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.